the moment. And finally, we have a guest who's had a little bit of success. He's been in a couple of bands, but he's probably best known as the father of one of the world's best designers, Stella McCartney. <laughs> Sir Paul McCartney, there he is. Hello, Paul. All right. That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. That's a great show for you. It's my What I Call Live show, Miranda Hart. That's out now, and it's great fun. And then, of course, the other huge success you've had is Call the Midwife, which is such a lovely show. I don't know if you know this, but um, I believe Paul McCartney is a fan of Call the Midwife. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. I, I met um, Sir Paul uh, a couple of years ago at the Jubilee concert. Made a complete to myself. But anyway, I'm trying to re regroup back <laughs> today, tonight. And, uh, yeah, he said... Because he said to me, oh, my gosh, Miranda. And I said, how do you know who I am? <laughs> really high. And he said, because I've got the telly. <laughs> <laughs> I got the telly! I was just that like, you're a bit, it's you're who you are. I went a bit mental. It's embarrassing. Um, but anyway, because his, his, his mother was a midwife. Wow. So he has memories of, I'm just saying words for you, sorry. Um, he has memories of his mum cycling off, as, as we did in the series. It, it? Is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah that is true. It's my new friend, Paul, Paul Cycling into the snow yeah. one night, yes. Oh. Yeah, amazing. isn't that amazing? But it's kind of weird, because you're, you're right, you kind of don't think that Paul McCartney watches the same TV we do, which is absurd, of course. I know. Like, do you, how do you get that kind of thing, Paul? Do you realise people think you're different? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> okay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you agree, all my guests are splendid this evening, but I've been so excited about uh, getting my final one out. He was the bass with the Beatles, he was the wind beneath wings, now he's enjoying a solo career that's seeing him conquer the world all over again. On his latest tour, uh, listen to this, he played 63 shows to over 2 million people. It is Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> Oh. Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. So you just got back from Brazil, I think? Yeah. Is that right? And you've just got back. You've only just got back a few days yeah, ago. Yeah, a few days ago, yeah. Okay. How was that? How was Brazil for you? It looks incredible. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, they're all so young, the audience, you know, as you see there. They're 20-something um, babes, most of them. Wow. Which is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> When you look back, do you remember what it was like to not be famous? Is there a period you look back, and do you look back on that with fondness? Or is yeah, uh, I do look back on it with fondness, because, you know, it's your childhood and it's all that. I mean, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, because you couldn't get in things that I can get in now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there was that. Um, but, yeah, I do look back on it with fondness, because, um, you know, I can say, oh, that was pre beetle And to think of us guys trying to invent the Beatles and trying to think of how to write songs and all of that. You know, once you look at the uh, career and the success of the Beatles, it's pretty cute to imagine these guys yeah. writing this stuff, you know, not knowing how to do it. You, you know? said something interesting, though. You said there were, you, these guys trying to invent the Beatles. Were you deliberately thinking, OK, we've got to do something new? Because I always got the feeling, having read and studied and really been obsessed with the Beatles for many years, that you were, you know, you were very excited by Buddy Holly, by Chuck Berry. You wanted to play that kind of music, and you learned that music, and initially in Germany you played that music. Mm. Were you deliberately trying to distance yourself from that or create something new, or were you just trying to do your own version of that? No, you know what happened? We used to do covers all the time, as you say, uh, and most of our act was covers, and we learned millions of them in Germany, uh, but we come back and we're singing these kind of little Richard Chuck Berry songs uh, in clubs, and there'd be other bands on the, on the bill, and we'd be sitting in the dressing room and we'd hear them do, Long Tall Sally, and go, oh, we're going to do that, yeah. and then we'd hear them do a Chuck Berry thing, and we'd hear them basically do our act. So we, we had to come up with a, a trick as to defeat this. So John and I started writing. Wow. And that's how we started writing. So it was no just great muse. It was just to beat these people who knew our act. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Wings fan as well. And I'm a huge fan of your, your solo work. And your new album is tremendous. Well, there's one track on it um, that I was just... And, it, and it's very much you, it seems very much you talking about that period. It's a track called Early Days. And I'll read you a couple of lines, if you don't mind. 
Um, you talk, you said dressed in black from head to toe, two guitars across our backs. We would walk the city road seeking someone who listened to the music that we were writing down at home. You know, it's very much the whole thing seems to be you uh, processing or coming to terms or just remembering fondly that period. And you haven't really done that so much before, have you? No, uh, you know, I just got this idea um, to put it into a song because I often think about that. You know, you, like I say, I often just that is exactly what would happen. Me and John, dressed in black, guitars across our backs, writing letters to people. Dear sir, we are a semi-pro rock combo. <laughs> and, you know, please listen to us. Um, so I just actually just wrote down what had happened, you know. And they are fond memories. Because, you know, then the Beatles happened and it all got sort of to be a phenomenon and everything. But then it wasn't. It was just two guys wandering along trying to work it out, you know. But I love to hear that they have fond memories for you because I know there was, there was some acrimony in the band later on and there mm. were moments, and for us as fans to know that you have those memories of your time with John and George Ringo, you know, that, yeah. that means a lot and you must be aware of it. It's very important to me too because of that acrimony. Um, that was business. You know, we got to a point where we really got kind of crappy over business. Uh, won't go into that, but it did. Um, so to me... It, that rubbed off on me. And for years I thought, oh, yeah, you know, me and John, bitter rivals and all this stuff. I was very lucky. Before he got killed, we, we were mates. And we were ringing each other and we were talking about, I don't know, he, he used to make bread. So we'd talk about, what's your recipe, man? You know, whatever, you know. Um, so it got very uh, normal again. And I say, you know, he'd, he'd had uh, Sean. So he, now he had a baby. And I was bringing up babies, so we could talk about that and all this stuff, you know. Um, you could talk about normal stuff. Yeah. So it got very nice, and, and I said, you know, to this day, I'm so glad. Because yeah. it would have been the worst thing in the world to have had this great relationship, and then soured, and he gets killed. Yeah. I mean, so there was some solace in the fact that... Uh, we got back together and we were, we were good friends. Is it, I remember reading that you almost did get back together and play together again. There was talk about it, yeah, and people were offering fantastic <coughs> songs like they're doing for Zeppelin now, you know, to do it. But, uh, and we'd talk about it, but it would always be, nah, you know, we've done it. Yeah. We kind of knew we'd come full circle and yeah. we thought, it's going to spoil it. So that was never on the cards then? Not really, no. It's one of the things I most admire about the Beatles. I mean, I, you know, I, I unashamedly love the Beatles, but it's one of the things I most admire. But again, especially in our culture now, where we can't leave anything alone. Yeah. Well, we've got to bring everything back and let's do it one last time. It's the fifth anniversary, it's the 25th anniversary. You know, no one can leave anything alone. One of the main examples I always cite for things being finite, and one of the, good exa one of the best examples of it is... The Beatles were making records for like seven years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was a very, very short. That's what's so time. weird. Yeah. That's what's yeah, so yeah, weird. Yeah. Can I ask you one more question before we move on from this? Because just that moment when John was murdered, when did you hear it? Who, t who told you? When did you hear that had happened? Uh, I was at home and um, I got a phone call. It was early in the morning. I was in the country uh, and um, I just got a phone call. And it was like, I think it was like that for everyone. It was just so horrific. Uh, you couldn't take it in, and I couldn't take it in. And uh, I just, you know, just for days, you just, you just couldn't think that he, he was gone, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, it was just a huge shock, and then I had to tell Linda and the kids, and, you know, and, you know. And, um, yeah, it was very difficult. Yeah. I mean, it was very difficult for any, everyone. It, that was like a... A really big shock, in, I think, in most people's lives. It's a bit like Kennedy. Yeah. There, there were certain moments like that. The thing was because we, it was a shock for us, but we didn't know it. Yeah, no, for me, it was just so sad um, that, you know, we, I wasn't going to see him again and we weren't going to hang up. And, you know, for me, the, the biggest thing was that the guy who took his life, the phrase kept coming in my head, jerk of all jerks. <laughs> It was just like, this is just a jerk. This is not even a guy politically motivated. It's just some total random thing. I go, hey, pop. Just a damage, a broken like, person. You know, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah. You know, you mentioned earlier on that you have young fans out there in Brazil and all over the world, of course. Uh, it's very interesting what you've done now, I think, from that perspective. There's a, a new McCartney song called Hope for the Future, which is a beautiful song, but you're releasing it in a very unusual and very different kind of way, aren't you? Yeah, well, I was asked to do it for a video game. Okay. And um, I didn't know what was involved, so I went to meet the people, and they were doing this new video game called Destiny. Which I believe you play. I play Destiny. I play video games. I like it. Right. I play Titanfall and Destiny on my Xbox. Yes. Well. So yeah, they asked me to. <laughs> no, well, not all of us play well, video games. You want to? You want to wise up? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you one for Christmas, all right? Yeah. I'll get you a console. But, um, so, uh, they asked you to do a song for this, and you're not a big, you're not someone I would have down as a big gamer. No, I'm not a gamer, no. I, I watch the kids doing it. You know, I've got grandkids who are, like, really seriously good at all that. So, I basically watch them, and they'll give me a go, reluctantly, and I'll just get killed, and then I'll hand back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, there was the, the rock band, uh, and those, I'm sure you know the game rock band, where you could play instruments along with the screen. You weren't playing the proper instrument, you were playing a sort of... A game, and little it. buttons coming towards you, yeah. And then it was exciting when the Beatles edition came out. Did mm. you ever get to play the Beatles rock band? I did, and got mashed. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I was with one of my grandkids who was doing great, yeah. and he's playing away, he's doing this, he's winning. And I said, yeah, but I play a real bass, and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever play the drums version? The guy, I tried playing that and I actually had newfound respect for Ringo because, man, he must have known what he was doing after all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. This is uh, the song, um, Hope for the Future. This is out Monday. Look at this. this. And this is a very unique video. I'll ask you how you made this afterwards. Mm. Look at this. as well is, uh, Hope for the Future, you, you went back to Abbey Road to record that, yeah. didn't you? Now that must be quite an experience for you to go back to the memories there. Yeah, for me it is a nostalgia trip. Uh, I remember the very first day we walked in as four twenty-something boys um, and we came in the tradesman's entrance because we weren't allowed to come through the control room, that was for the grown-ups. So <laughs> we would just, you know, come in and like, wow, it's a studio. George had a black eye. He got smacked by some guy at the cavern <laughs> the week before. Um, so, yeah, I just, whenever I go in there, I, all of that comes flooding back. When you go to Abbey Road, the thing, I drive past Abbey Road quite a lot, because I live in North London, I live nearby, and often you go, and there's the famous zebra crossing, mm. where the photograph was taken of you, or not you, because you were dead, obviously, but the version <laughs> of the person yeah. of you. But that photograph taken there, and, and now, of course, that's become a, a point of pilgrimage. It's, mm. it's, there's always, always, if it's daylight, there are tourists there, mm. and there are people, and it drives you mad. <laughs> <laughs> I curse your name once a week. Yeah. What do you think I feel like <laughs> what? when I'm sticking, I'm stuck there? I'm <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have, you ever, have you ever been at the trap? Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Pull the visor down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I tell you this, the truth. Um, I, I've always wanted to recreate it, and I do often think, you know, you see like, some Japanese fans, I think, I'll just hop out. <laughs> <laughs> just go in there. You have them. to do that I've one. I've got to do it one yeah. day. But uh, this Halloween, we'd been to a Halloween party at my daughter Mary's, and um, I had this amazing werewolf mask. So I'm going home, and I've still got this big mask on, and we go to the crossing. So I just say, oh, we've got to do it, got to do it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's 11 at night, and... It, so I stop, and Nancy, uh, my wife, I said, come on, we've got to do it. So she gets her phone, and we're holding up the traffic, but I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> the, big, the werewolf thing, and this guy looking very annoid. Yeah, that me, was me. Know. That was me. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? 
Matt, what's wrong with you? I've got to get home, I've got a party. <laughs> Uh, you know what, it's a thrill for me to have you here on the show, and I thank you, uh, and I've so enjoyed having you all on, but yeah. Paul, to have you back here is such a joy, so thank you so much thank for coming you, John. on. Thank Join you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. It's a former time. Thank you. It's a former time. 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 It